we're joined now by CBS News national security correspondent David Martin. Good to have you with us again, David. The president was very clear that he is convinced by U.S. intelligence that this invasion will happen, that President Putin decided to do it. How is he that certain? Because the intelligence says that Russian troops have actually received orders now to proceed with the invasion. So not only are they moving up closer and closer to the border into these attack positions, but the commanders on the ground are making specific plans for how they would maneuver in their sector of the battlefield. They're, they're doing everything that American commanders would do once they got the order to proceed. We know Vladimir Putin gives himself many options. From what you know, what is the option he seems to be setting himself up for? How does this play out? Well, he is definitely giving himself the option for a full-scale invasion of the country, which would begin with an attack on the capital of Kyiv. It would and begin there? It would begin there. With an aerial assault? An aerial, well, a cyber assault to begin with. Um, but it will look much like the shock and awe campaign that the U.S. unleashed on the city of Baghdad in 2003 when it invaded Iraq. Cyber weapons didn't exist back in 2003, so that is a new ingredient, and you would think cyber would come first to knock out communications, knock out power, but then they would be followed by missile strikes and airstrikes and special operations raids to seize key parts of the city, radio, TV stations, and then you could see the units rolling from the border north of Kyiv down on either side of the city to isolate uh, the city and, and prevent the government from escaping into a government in exile. When you compare it to a shock and awe, there is a certain amount of precision that's assumed with that. Um, precision is not necessarily a, in the Russian playbook for military operations. I mean, what should we be preparing for? Well, remember, the Russians have had 18 years to go to school on, on how we conducted that uh, shock and awe campaign. So they, they have developed precision-guided weapons. Um, I would expect them to use them because they're, they're more e effective. Uh, if he wants to have this country back in the Russian Empire, he doesn't want to destroy right. Kyiv. He wants, he wants a working government. He doesn't want to find what we found when we got to uh, Baghdad to, to find this uh, country totally stripped of its infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to trying to swallow a country, I mean, the argument from the U.S. has been we've poured in weapons and training and helped the Ukrainians to be able to resist this kind of uh, occupation. Is that what we're looking for, uh, occupation here, or is this just like military coercion? Well, he's making the preparations for occupation. He has assembled a force that could uh, invade and take down most of the country. And now he has begun to mobilize reserves who would serve as the occupation force. Now, I'm sure he's going to do the least that it takes to achieve his goal. And if his, his goal is to bring Ukraine back into his sphere of influence, maybe he can do it by just taking down the capital. Mm -hmm. Maybe he can do it by cutting a bigger piece out of the East. But he is obviously making preparations to do whatever it takes. All right. David Martin, great to have you and your insight.